In my last video, we covered how to draw a light ray diagram for reflection. Today, let's do the same thing for refraction. Looking at our diagram over here, we have two different media, air as well as glass, which are both of different optical densities. So let's identify which one is more dense and which one is less dense. Now, air we all know is very light, right? So this is optically less dense. Okay, what about glass? Glass is the opposite. We say that it's optically more dense. Now, before we draw anything, looking at our diagram over here, we see that there is a light ray striking the glass air boundary. Now, this light ray, we call it the incident ray. This incident ray, we say it strikes the boundary at a point called the point of incidence. And at this point of incidence, let us draw a dotted straight line perpendicular to the boundary. And this is known as our normal. As my light ray passes from air, which is optically less dense, to glass, which is optically more dense, what happens to the behaviour of the light ray as it enters the glass block? So when we talk about behaviour of light ray, we always talk about two things. The first thing being the speed of light, and the second thing being where the light ray bends. So as we are entering from air, which is optically less dense, to glass, which is optically more dense, we say that the speed of light, it decreases. And thus, we say that the light ray will bend towards the normal. How do we represent that on the diagram? Instead of my light ray travelling in a straight line like this, we say that it slows down and it bends towards the normal, like so. Don't forget to draw your directional arrows to indicate the direction. Because this light ray has bent, we call it the refracted ray. Now, you see that our refracted ray is coming into contact with the bottom air glass boundary. In other words, this refracted ray is also acting as an incident ray. And at the point of incidence over here, we once again draw our perpendicular dotted line, which is known as the normal. So now my light ray is travelling from glass back out to air. Do you notice that the direction of light ray is the opposite of the scenario from earlier? This means that the behaviour of my light ray will also be the opposite. Instead of my light ray travelling straight like this, it will bend away from the normal. Once again, don't forget to draw your directional arrows. And because this is the light ray that has been refracted, we call this the refracted ray. So some questions may even ask you to go a step further. They will ask you for the angle of incidence as well as the angle of refraction. Okay, so let's do a little recap on what those two things are. We say that the angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray as well as the normal. Let us look at my upper boundary first. Like I said, angle of incidence is between the incident ray and the normal. Therefore, it is the angle between them. So let us label this as I. What about the angle of refraction? It is simply just the angle between the normal as well as the refracted ray. So it is over here. And let us represent it with an arc. So now I want you to pause the video, go and try to find the angle of incidence as well as the angle of refraction for the lower boundary. Did you get it right? If you did, good job!